Hello, everybody. I am Mrs. Puppet, and this is my place. I'm so glad to see you came for another story time today, because I have picked out a really good one. It's called The House in the Forest. Have you heard of this story? Well, it's okay if you haven't, because we're going to read it now. The House in the Forest. A poor woodcutter lived with his wife and three daughters in a little hut on the edge of a lonely forest. One morning, as he was about to go to work, he said to his wife, Tell her eldest daughter to bring my dinner to me in the forest, for if I come home for it in the middle of the day, I shall never get my work done. So that she cannot get lost, he added, I will take a bag of millet with me and strew the seeds along the path for her to follow. When the sun was high in the sky, the eldest daughter set out on her way with a bowl of soup. But the field sparrows and wood sparrows, larks and finches and blackbirds and siskins had pecked up all the millet seeds hours before, and the girl could not find the trail. Trusting to chance, she went on and on until the sun sank and night began to fall. The trees rustled in the darkness. Owls hooted, Hoo! Hoo! She began to feel afraid. In the distance, she saw a light glimmering between the trees. Perhaps there are people living there who could take me in for the night, she thought, and walked towards the light, which turned out to be coming from a house. She knocked at the door, and a rough voice called, Come in! She found an old man sitting at a table. His long white beard fell across the table and almost down to the ground. By the stove lay a hen, a cockerel, and a brindle cow. The girl asked for shelter for the night, and the man said, My pretty hen, my pretty cockerel, my pretty brindle cow, what do you say now? No, answered the animals. That must have meant yes. For the old man said to the girl, Here, you may have shelter and food. Go to the fire and cook us our supper. The girl found plenty of food in the kitchen and cooked a good supper for herself and the old man, but she didn't think of the animals. She ate, and when she'd had enough, she said, Now I'm tired. Where is there a bed I can sleep in? The animals replied, you have eaten with him, you have drunk with him, you have no thought for us. You can find out for yourself where you can pass the night. The old man said, Just go upstairs and you will find a bed. The girl went up and went to sleep. The old man went up a little bit later and opened a trap door that dropped her down into the cellar. When the woodcutter came home, he reproached his wife for leaving him hungry all day. It's not my fault, his wife replied. Our eldest daughter went out with your dinner. She must have gotten lost, but I'm sure she'll come back tomorrow. So the woodcutter asked for his second daughter to bring his dinner to him in the forest the next day. I will take a bag of lentils and strew them on the path, he said. They are larger than millet seeds, so the girl will see them better and won't lose her way. At dinner time, the second daughter carried the food out into the forest, but the lentils on the path had disappeared. The birds had pecked them up just as they had done with the millet the day before. The girl wandered into the forest until night, and when she too reached the house of the old man, where she asked for food and a bed, the old man asked the animals again. My pretty hen, my pretty cockerel, my pretty brindle cow, what do you say now? The animals again replied, Do! And everything happened just as it had the day before. The girl cooked a good meal, ate and drank with the old man, but did not think of the animals. And when she inquired about her bed, they answered, You have eaten with him, you have drunk with him, you have no thought for us. You can go find out for yourself where you can pass the night. When she was asleep, the old man came, looked at her, shook his head, and dropped her down into the cellar. On the third morning, the woodcutter said to his wife, Send our youngest child out with my dinner today. She has always been good and obedient and will stay on the right path, 
Instead of roving about like her sisters, the wild bumblebees, the mother did not want to send her dear third child in case she became lost like the other two. But the father said he would strew some peas on the path, because peas are even larger than lentils, and they would show the girl the way. By the time the youngest daughter went out with her basket on her arm, the wood pigeons had pecked up all the peas, and she did not know which way to turn. She was full of sorrow, thinking all the time of how hungry her father would be and how sad her good mother would be if she could not find her way home. At length, when it grew dark, she saw the light and came to the house in the forest. She asked to spend the night there, and the animal with the long beard again asked his animals, Pretty hen, my pretty cockerel, my pretty brindle cow, what do you say now? they replied. Then the girl went and petted the cockerel and the hen, stroking their smooth feathers with her hand, and she caressed the brindle cow between her horns. When she had made some good soup, she said, aren't, there, aren't the good animals having something? Outside there is plenty of food. I will look after them before I have my own supper. She stewed barley for the cockerel and the hen, and brought an armful of sweet-smelling hay for the cow. Then she fetched a bucket of water in case they were thirsty. When the animals were fed, the girl sat at the table by the old man and ate her soup. Then she asked where she could go to bed. The animals replied, You have eaten with us, you have drunk with us, you have had a kind thought for us all. We wish you a good night. She went upstairs, said her prayers, and went to sleep. She slept quite quietly until midnight, but then was awoken by the sound of cracking and splitting in every corner of the house. The doors sprang open and beat against the walls. The beams groaned as if they were being torn out of their joints. It seemed as if the staircase was falling down, and there was a crash, as if the entire roof had fallen in. But when all grew quiet once more, the girl realized she was not hurt, and she fell back asleep again. When she awoke in the morning, with the brilliant sunshine, what did she see? She was lying in a vast hall, and everything around her shone with royal splendor. Golden flowers woven in silk tapestries hung on the wall. Her bed was made of ivory with a canopy of red velvet, and on a chair close by was a pair of slippers embroidered with pearls. The girl thought she must be dreaming, but three richly clothed servants came in and asked what they could do for her. She replied, where is the old man? I will get up at once and make some soup for him. Then I will feed the pretty hen, the pretty cockerel, and the pretty brindle cow. But instead of the old man with the long beard, a young handsome man came to her. He said, I am a prince's son. I was bewitched by a wicked witch that made me live in this forest as an old bearded man. No one was allowed to be with me but my three servants in the form of a hen, a cockerel, and a brindle cow. The spell could not be broken until a girl came to us whose heart was so good that she showed herself full of love not only for people but also towards animals. You have done this. At midnight we were set free and the old hut in the forest changed back again into my royal palace. The king's son ordered the three servants to bring the girl's father and mother to the palace for the marriage feast. But where are my two sisters? asked the girl. The king's son replied, I have locked them in the cellar, but tomorrow they will go and live as servants on a farm beyond the forest, where they will learn to be kind and not to leave poor animals hungry. Well, wasn't that a really good story? It's always better to think about others and to take care of not only people but animals because animals have feelings too. And so when you are kind and you take care of everything and everyone, then good things happen to you. And hopefully her two sisters will learn that lesson and be able to come see her someday soon. Anyway, it was wonderful to have another story time, and I can't wait to see you again tomorrow.